Hello everyone and welcome to our newest series on the Jake Cooper channel. We are managing the yellow submarine Villarreal attempting to take them to Champions League glory. This episode is going to set up the series, set up the club, what we're going to try and do before we get into a video which will hopefully only be in a couple of days, which is where we'll get into the transfers and the meat and grit of rebuilding this squad. But the first question you're probably all thinking, why Villarreal? Well, I did mention I was looking to do a series for a club that's already in the Champions League to then win the Champions League, just because I don't have, there's a lot of time constraints, basically. I don't have the time right now to do a series, a daily series where we start off in League Two, get promoted all the way to the Premier League, win the Champions League, as much as I'd love to do that kind of thing. I don't really have the time for it at this current moment. However, a series that might only take two, three, four seasons, I think is a perfect length, like how we had Wolfsburg, like how we have Newcastle around that length will be perfect. But I did have many choices. I was thinking Benfica, Zagreb, but then I came across Villarreal and obviously in real life, they've recently made the Champions League semi-final where the first leg has been played. This might age terribly, but it looks like Liverpool have got it down. It looks like Liverpool will knock them out 2-0 up after the first leg. And Villarreal got heavily, heavily criticised for basically not playing amazing football, for playing defensive football. And some people even called it a disgrace that they were in a Champions League semi-final. But I think that's a complete load of utter rubbish, to be honest. Villarreal have their own unique style of play. It might not be amazing to watch, but this is a club that many people would be surprised were even in the knockout stages of the Champions League. Never mind make it to the semi-final, knocking out some massive teams and winning the Europa League the year before. Despite not having too much in terms of trophies in the cabinet in their history, their recent form is nothing short of amazing considering the city of Villarreal has a population that's smaller than that of what can fit in Anfield. They've got a population of just under 60,000 I believe and that was the second smallest populated city that has made a Champions League semi-final only Monaco have a smaller amount and that was a year when they were full of some unreal talents back then but I thought why not go for Villarreal not only are we going to try and win the Champions League and prove people wrong we're going to try and win La Liga as well disrupt the dominance over the last few years of Atletico, Barca and Real Madrid take our chance and become the biggest team in Spain and also hopefully in European football but it's not going to be easy at all at Villarreal and I'll get into why in a second before we do though you guys can forgive me it's the first episode of a series I've got to do all the usual YouTube shout out stuff this is where most people are going to come along for the first time and view the channel view the series so as many people I can get on board as possible I'm gonna do it if you do enjoy this video smash the like button for me if we can hit 200 likes it will really help share these videos out to as many people as possible and get the series off to as strong as a start as we can whether you've been around the channel for a while or you're new if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet i'd greatly appreciate it we've recently surpassed 7,000 subscribers at the time of recording which is amazing so any support we can get hitting that subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate comment down below your thoughts on the series who we should keep sell or just say hi in the comments down below that will also help the youtube algorithm if you want to as well you can find a discord linked in the description where you can not only share your saves and your signings and your wonder kids you can also ask for tips ask for help and it's an amazing community that's been built to be honest everyone is so nice so lovely so helpful so if you want to check that out feel free and the last thing if you are interested at all in financially supporting the channel don't feel like you have to check it out but if you want to near the subscribe button there's a join button a video will play and i'll tell you a little bit about the perks of potentially being a channel member anyway Back to the video and back to Villarreal. This is where it's all starting. As I've said, we're going to try and win the Champions League. However, Villarreal's history isn't exactly star studded. They've been runners up and third place in 2008, 2005. So most of their success has came in the period post 2000. You'll also remember they did beat Manchester United in a penalty shootout to win the Europa League recently. And other than that, they haven't won all that much. There was a Spanish third division group five win in the 1970s. But even when they got relegated recently to the Spanish second division, they didn't win the league they just came runners up in it and then got promoted through that so if we do look at their history you can see it's been a bit of an up, up down up down up down situation however Unai Emery has done a great job at Villarreal considering the squad he's got which is something we're about to take a look at as we first check out the finances and the club vision so in terms of what the club wants us to do on this path towards the Champions League develop players using the youth system at the club and also sign under 21 players for the future which is exactly what I think I'll be doing with the squad and I'll tell you why in a second and then end of current season what they're wanting 
qualify for the knockout rounds of the Champions League is a must apparently. So we just need to make it out of the group stage and take that as a win. They also want us to develop the best youth system in the country and by the end of the 2022-2023 season become considered as the best of the rest. Financially we are doing okay I believe, nothing amazing. £20 million in the overall balance, £12 million of transfer budget. In terms of debts and loans there isn't too much going on. We're a pretty financially secure club and I think we'll be fine from here on out. Development centre, there's not all that much coming through. They mentioned that they want one of the best youth systems in the country. I'm not sure they're anywhere near that stage, to be honest, looking at the players they've got produced at the club. We need to rejuvenate all of that. However, their facilities are in good shape. You can see somewhere around here, where is it? Here we go. Youth facilities and training facilities are of an excellent nature with a continental reputation. And where's our youth recruitment and academy coaching? They're at a good level. So you'd assume we will get some good youth intakes. So overall, it looks like we've got the good foundations to at least be a Champions League side in La Liga in this first year and maybe make the knockout stages of the Champions League. But there's a big issue at Villarreal. The squad that they have is not a bad squad at all. Emre has done a good job of bringing players that most people would have written off and making them like very good. My, the biggest example for me, Juan Foyf. I know he was young when he was at Tottenham, but he didn't look all that great. They've got Alberto Moreno, Serge Aurier, who were considered two of the weakest fullbacks defensively in the Premier League in recent years. Both of them are in a club that's considered one of the strongest defensive units in Spain. On top of that, you've got Dan Juma as one of the better players at the club who joined from Bournemouth, where yes, he was good for them in the championship, but when he was in the Premier League, he wasn't really anything special. Etienne Capu, Coquelin were average Premier League players at best. And then if we sort by age, here is the real problem at the club. I mean, I've already done it apparently. You've seen a few players in the early 20s, but it doesn't take long before you realise most of the key men in this squad are 30, 28, 29 plus. We've got Albiol, Ibora, Capue, Parejo, Asensio, Coquelin, uh, Gerard Moreno even is quite old. It's a very ageing squad and it's not one that's going to last for all that long. And I think that's where our big challenge is going to be. We've got to get rid of a lot of this squad and replace it with younger players. There's some great players in here still that we can definitely use for the next couple of years, but we do need to be looking towards that slow transition of getting rid of some of these older heads and bringing the younger ones through. In terms of who are the best players at the club, we've got Pau Torres, who I'm sure will hang around for a good while. He is a top tier centre back and someone I'm very happy to have at the club. Gerard Moreno, Parejo, Asensio, Coquelin, Albiol, as I mentioned, some of the older heads are the better players at the club. Everyone else is pretty decent. It's a very nicely balanced squad to be honest everyone is at a decent star rating which even if you don't trust it too much it's a good representation that we've got a lot of players at a similar level but I don't think many of these are Champions League winning quality Jeremy Pino however the player with the most potential at the club could definitely be a Champions League winner a wonder kid a three-star player currently with five-star potential ability either he's going to be the jewel in our crown as we go for a Champions League or we'll sell him on for a massive, massive valuation in a few years. Who knows where that's going to go? We've got two good young players out on loan. We've got Jaquese, who should be a good player for us amongst many others. But in general, this squad, I think, is going to need a bit of work. And maybe, just maybe, I know it's a good squad in real life, but I think in terms of football manager, a lot of these guys are going to have to go out the door and replace them with someone new, maybe even before the first season starts. So that's going to be my next job. And it will be the next episode when we make the transfers. But I think the last things we'll look at is the staff situation. Needs a bit of work. Not amazing. Not terrible. But tactically as well, I have not even thought about what we're going to play. Now, I could go down the route of trying to replicate their defensive style in real life. But I don't fancy that. I want to do something a bit different. We've done vertical tiki tackle with Wolfsburg. Gagan Press is overpowered and might be a bit boring if we run with that. So it's either control possession or tiki tacker. What formations are suggested with tiki tacker, seeing as it's telling us we could do a good job of that? Five at the back could be interesting. I haven't done a five at the back formation yet since Lazio last year. So if we do click on that one and then select best 11, what are we looking at? Is is this a formation we could actually play? It looks like we could, you know, Coquelin, Parejo, Moreno, Aurier. Maybe they're not defensively great, but they could definitely be good wingbacks for us. Chiquese, Danjuma, uh, Gerard Moreno. Obviously, I'll tweak some of the roles and stuff like that, but you know what, that, that could definitely work. I think that might be the way we go, you know. Okay, yes, right, let's do it. Let's set in stone. This is a tactic that we're going to use for the series. We can adjust it slightly, but we're mainly going to stick to this. And it's the transfers that we'll do to try and make this tactic work to a Champions League winning level. 
I think it's going to be great fun. I hope you're all on board for the series. Hopefully you're all happy with what we've picked. I know there's some people that really like the one-off rebuilds and some people that prefer the series style. I'm going to mix the two up. I'm going to try and do a better job now of keeping the one-off rebuilds going because the last two I did for the channel, the Burnley and the Leicester one, have helped the channel grow a lot and have got a lot of views, which isn't the only aim when you're making YouTube content, but it really does help in terms of building the channel up when you throw in those one-off rebuilds, which new people can access every now and then. So we will do a bit of that. I think I'll try and keep a Spanish core to the squad if I can, but yeah, there's some work to be done in a transfer window. Hopefully it will only be a few days or maybe even just a day before I get the next video out on this because it's what I'm going to do as soon as I stop hitting record we'll get going. If anyone is still here at this point before we end the video, I just want to say in general, a massive thank you. Whether you do enjoy the Villarreal series, whether you decide not to stick with it, whatever it might be, just a massive thank you to anyone who's watching, who supported the channel to get to this point. The rate at which we've grew recently, I'm baffled by. I still don't understand how even one person, two people sit here and watch the content, never mind you know, thousands on some days. It really does blow my mind. So thank you guys for all the support. Who knows where we're going to be in a year's time. This time last year, we'd started our Lazio save. Now we're starting our Villarreal save. We had great fun with Lazio, but it's Villarreal time now, guys. Villarreal to glory. What are we going to call it? Villarreal, Villarreal victory, Villarreal to victory, the Villarreal vision. One of them too. I'm sure I'll make a cool title with some kind of V alliteration in there. But yeah, thank you all. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you when we make some transfers. So stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. Drop your transfer recommendations in the comments down below if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.